Yes, I, w I just got two covers of a magazine. I was in great shape. I graduated, but I felt like nothing. I felt so empty. I felt like I was a hamster on a wheel, constantly moving but not going anywhere because my idea of life and happiness just wasn't matching up. Because life and happiness, it's not about what you're attaining. It's not what you're getting. It's what you're giving. It's about passion and it's about purpose. And I realized that in my moments of deafness when I was over a toilet bowl, feeling so empty about who I was and what my purpose in life was. And that's when I decided right then and there that I was going to dedicate my life to fitness and to spread the positive words of taking care of your body. And that was a tough thing to do because right then and there, I wasn't taking care of my body. For three or four years, I was throwing up, binging and throwing up um, two to three times a day, four to five times a week. And finally, after a very long period of recovery, I finally recovered. And I ended up gaining 30 pounds because that's what happens. There's always, the, you have to deal with it. And I knew I would, I would have to deal with it. It was not a matter of if, but when I would eventually gain weight because my body knew that I wasn't going to feed it or that I was going to throw up the food that I was feeding it. And a lot of women, whether they know it or not, especially if you're going on diets and disorder, you have a disordered eating and your body doesn't trust you. And at, so at one point it shuts down and my body shut down for years. I was 155 pounds at my heaviest. And I was exercising more than I did before. I was eating less carbs than I did before, but I was not dropping an ounce because my body didn't trust me anymore. Mm -hmm. And in this time period, I met my husband in 2007. He loved me just the way I was. <laughs> and, and, we, and, you know, we started with nothing, you know. I moved back home from San Francisco to Sacramento because my mom was going, undergoing kidney failure, mm -hmm. going to dialysis. And I realized I want to help all these people but I want to help the person that means the most to me, and that was my mother. So I went back home, quit my job at 24 Hour Fitness Corporate. I was a project a coordinator with them, and I started a nonprofit called Fitness Without Borders. And um, when we've had programs in the Sacramento and Elkbrook area, but so I, start, I met him in 2007. We gave birth in 2009, 2010, and 2011. We started our first care home for the elderly in 2010, and another one in 2013. Life has been incredibly busy. You know, with all, not just having the kids, but after giving birth, you know, I loved your little thing. It was, there's, you're a business owner, you're self-employed. I'm a business owner, and that means after I gave birth, it doesn't matter. I don't get maternity leave. Maternity leave. I have to uh, make sure that things are still operating. Of course, I could have, um, I could have let other people handle it, but I'm a little bit of a control person. And it was the very beginning of the business too. When you're growing a business, you have to be in the forefront. So I was working really hard, but I made sure that my health was a priority. So that brings us to here and now, 2013. I decided to put that picture on my Facebook and it went viral. And a lot of people were upset and a lot of people were inspired. But what kind of disappointed me in this whole process is, is that instead of people asking me what I did wrong in posting that picture, I wish people asked me what I did right, what made me successful. And in this group, I'll, it'll be the first time I'll tell you why and what made me successful. Number one, I had a desire. Okay, when you create a desire, you, you become uncomfortable. And that discomfort is actually what's gonna make you grow. You can't get anywhere if you're comfortable with where you're at. You have to desire something greater. So I created a desire for something greater. I knew I wanted to be in incredible shape after having kids. It's not easy, but I knew I wanted it. Number two, I created a goal. I created that long-term goal and I created short-term goals. And every single day I thought about my goal. If you wake up in the morning and you don't have a goal, then you're just going to end up anywhere in life because you're just going to be twiddling along. You can't do that. You have to have a specific goal and work towards that every single day. And that's what I did. Every morning I wake up, I write down six goals that I want to complete. And I make sure those six goals are not all business-related either. I believe in, my, I call it my three Ps. My professional, my personal, and my physical goals. Because you have to have balance in your life. You, you, it's not a matter of if, but when you will fall if you don't have balance in your life. So I always had those six goals, targeting those three Ps. I not only created goals, but I created a plan. And sometimes that plan didn't work, but it didn't matter because it's all about consistency. It's all about reflection and then following through and, and getting up and doing it again. <clears throat> Differently, of course. You don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over again. And then I also created a deadline. You know, at this time, when I took this photo, my deadline was summertime. 
It wasn't August 25th when I took this photo. It was the summertime, so I gave myself a little bit of room. But yeah, you have to give yourself a deadline because there's no urgency. I mean, you guys know how it is to have urgency because you work with deadlines all the time. There's nothing like moving a seller or a buyer, like saying someone's about to buy it off, you know, up underneath you in the next day or so. So you have to have a deadline for yourself in your goals. So I had a desire, I had a goal, I had a plan, I had a deadline. Those things are, those things are what made me successful. Some of the things in my brain that helped me become successful throughout this process is my faith. You know, you can believe in whatever you believe in. I believe that you need to give yourself, you need to, you need to have, believe in something bigger than yourself to push you through this. You have to have faith, you have to have faith that wherever you are right now, you can become this other person. Even though you can't see it or feel it, you have to believe that you can become it. So I had faith. I had discipline. I had desire, I had passion. Passion is probably the biggest thing I had. Knowing that here I am, not only am I a role model to other people, I'm a role model to my children. And I wanted to show people that it's really important to take care of your body. You know, going back to my mother, she was so successful. If you meet her, if she were walking right now, she would light up this room. She really is an incredible woman. I mean, I watched her growing up, and she was successful at everything she did. And she accumulated a lot of wealth, a lot of you know, notoriety in the things that she did. She, but the thing is, she didn't just care for health. And I know that right now, she would get everything that she has, everything to have good health. You can't buy it. And so that's my message to you. And that's my message to all those who are critics of my message right here. What's your excuse? There is no excuse. The only thing that you own in this world is your body. I don't care if you own your house. I don't care if you own your, you, know, you think you own your kids. You own the, the clothes on your, that you're wearing. It doesn't matter. You don't really own that. The only thing that, the only vehicle that you have is your body. So my message also to you guys as realtors, you know, that passion. Wow, you are part of an amazing journey in people's lives. You are part of the biggest investment they're going to make in their life. Be passionate about that. They're going to make memories in that house that you're going to sell them. They're going to grow and, 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 and feel so invested in that experience. So if you're passionate about the things you do, you're going to believe it, you're going to breathe it, people are going to see it, they're going to want to be around it, and you're going to be naturally successful because that's what happened to me. I had a passion about fitness, and people knew it in my presence. People knew it in my talk, in my walk, and the things that I did, that even those who were a little bit critical of me on television said, you know what, I don't like the message, but I know what our intention was, and it's true. My intention, with all integrity, was to never make anyone feel bad, but for people to say, you know what, if I can do it, so can you. And with that, if anyone has any questions, bring them my way. <laughs> What's your three P's again? Personal, professional, and? Personal, professional, and physical. Physical. Yeah. Well, and one of the things I want to touch on or ask is kind of really, with three kids, I mean, and Rochelle and I have two, and we're super busy with two kids. I mean, it's going back to being purposeful about using your time wisely, and I see that you blog about that, you write yeah. about that, so would you talk more about how you're very purposeful with your time? Yes, so, you know, people don't realize um, how long it takes. Do you guys all know how long it takes to do five loads of laundry? Yeah. Do you know? yeah. How long? A week. <laughs> How long does it take you to run a mile? How long does it take you to cook dinner? How long does it take you to um, to drive from home to work? You guys need to be aware of how long it takes to do things and how long it takes to do things when you're distracted. Because for me, it takes me an hour to do laundry when I'm distracted and watch there's a show on TV. But if there's nothing on and it's just me in the laundry, it takes me 25 minutes to do five loads of laundry. Of course, it's not washing. It's just folding and putting it all away. 25 minutes. It takes me, um, I know how long it takes me to do any task. So what I would say to all of you is when you're really focused, you can get things done a lot quicker. And not only that, but don't do things when you're not focused. Don't do things when it's not natural. For, me, for example, I don't do laundry when my kids are awake. 
you know, I don't write because I'm a writer. I don't write when they're awake. I know when my flow times are. So know when your flow times are. My flow time to work out is early morning. My flow time to, um, to write is late night. My flow time to do laundry is um, That's Saturday nice. mornings. Um, so you need to know what your flow times are. You need to know exactly how you operate. And when you do have time to do things like work out, you need to be very intense. You can't just be on an elliptical reading the magazine. You need to be very present. So that's what my biggest thing is, and my biggest advice for everybody here, is that you need to be very present in whatever task that you're doing. You need to not think of anything else. You need to be present. So if you're running, think about running. Think about losing weight. Think about your goals. Think about going a little bit further. So in terms of time management, I don't do a lot of things that waste my time. I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook. Funny, because I have a Facebook. But there's certain there's certain times I'm on it. I'm on it when I'm my, when I'm putting my baby in bed, you know, or 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 when I'm I don't know. Whenever I have time, I'm on on Facebook. But I don't watch a lot of TV. That's another thing. I don't really. I don't think that there's a lot of programs out there that are really beneficial. And if there are, I do watch them. I like documentaries, I like history channels. But all the other stuff is just fluff. So you really need to um, value the things that you put into your life. You don't want to waste your time that doesn't give you value. So that's my answer to time management. Anyone else? Yes. Yes, thanks. Do you ever, when you're feeling down, what do you do to get out of it? Or do you ever feel down, I guess? Oh, I feel down all the time. <laughs> Does anyone read my website here? Has anyone read it? So if you read my website, I started a blog in 2005 at, in, in the death of my bulimia. I started it. I, and, I, and that's another answer is I write. So when I'm feeling down, I write how I'm feeling, and then I write about what my goals are, and then I write a plan. It always makes me feel better to create a to-do list. Or what I do is I get up. I mean, it's so easy because 